Why are you holding her? If there's one thing a royal python like the Duchess likes, it's staying nice and warm. And I'm warmer than her. And we can show you using the thermal imaging camera. Now, a thermal imaging camera tells you the surface temperature of things. The white or yellow or orange stuff is hot, and the pink or blue or purple stuff is colder. You can see that my skin is much, much, much hotter than the Duchess. And in fact, if I put my hand on the Duchess and leave it there for a few seconds, when I take it off, you can see I've left warm fingerprints on her skin. Human beings, like all mammals, are endotherms. In our cells, inside our bodies, we generate heat so that we maintain an internal body temperature of pretty exactly 37 degrees Celsius. But reptiles, like the Duchess, are what's called ectotherms. Duchess uses the environment to regulate her body temperature, and so the Duchess runs at a cooler temperature than us of about 22 degrees Celsius. Endotherms like us and exotherms like the Duchess have very different eating habits, and I should know. How should you know? Because I have been observing your eating habits and the Duchess's eating habits for the last week. I put CCTV in your house and her vivarium. Looking at the CCTV footage, we can see Zand is eating three times a day. The food gets converted into heat energy, but because some is lost through his skin, he must eat regularly to maintain a constant body temperature of 37 degrees. The Duchess's vivarium is set to the perfect temperature, and so she has only eaten once. In the wild, she'd sit in the sun or on a hot rock to keep warm in between meals. Lying under a lovely warm lamp here does exactly the same job. But why do we need a body temperature of 37 degrees? To find out, we're going to grow some fungi. So this is a jar of nutrient broth. This has everything that fungi needs to grow inside it. Mm. So first of all, I'm going to pour the same amount of the broth into two beakers. Now in this tube, I have a sample of a fungi called Botrytis. You can't see the fungus in the tube because it's microscopic. And it's a fungus that actually can hurt people if they breathe it in. I'm going to add the same amount of the fungal culture to each of those two beakers. Zant, take that, and you're going to grow your fungi at 37 degrees Celsius, which is a hot day at the beach. It's also human body temperature. I will be growing my beaker at 23 degrees Celsius, which is the average temperature of a typical reptile. And into the incubators they go to grow. These incubators are amazing. You can see that they're swirling our fungal culture so that oxygen and nutrients are spread evenly to help it grow. And the best bit about these incubators is that they were my inspiration for the dance I invented, the swirly. I've never heard of the swirly. Now, Chris, how long is this going to take? It will take a week. A week? I can't do the swirly for a week. You're going to have to, Zand. Ooh, maybe I can. One week later, and it's time to take a look at the samples. First of all, let's see the beaker that was grown at the reptile body temperature. Wow. It's full of blobs, clouds almost, of fungi. Fungi are incredible life forms. Take a look at this video of a fungus growing under a microscope. This is what it was doing in our incubator. It grows bigger by creating a network called a mycelium, made up of tiny fungal threads called hyphae. And this is what we can see in the beaker. Chris, that is a fantastic result for us, but not if this was growing inside a reptile. Let's have a look at what happened at the human body temperature. Look at that. It is still crystal clear, not a blob of fungus in sight. It's absolutely brilliant. So it shows really clearly that having that human body temperature does protect you against dangerous fungal growth. But don't worry about the Duchess. She's got a different strategy. Reptiles heat themselves up by sunbathing, and that kills any fungal growth. 